So, here we are. Tuesday. I had to think this morning, do my beans need going out? Honestly, does anyone else know what day it is? It's crackers, absolutely crackers. So, got my notes, got my two lots of worksheets, two lots of worksheets. We've got the older worksheets and the younger worksheets. Today, we're actually going to have a look at life in the rainforest. So when I say life in the rainforest, I mean in the rainforest, there's four different levels. We're actually going to have a look at some of the animals that live on those four different levels. We'll have a look at um, the different layers of the rainforest. We'll have a look at life in a tree as well. At one animal, one particular animal, hence the glove, that lives in the rainforest, or one of the rainforests. But also, we will have a look at the word search. I was actually, I, uh, I did the word search on the older children's worksheets. And honestly, I'm like, I love it. I love it. I don't actually, yeah, I do love it. Like I'm finding out little things. My hardest thing is, is remembering numbers. <sighs> Who remembers the shoe size? You know, that's hard enough for me. Never mind kind of um, big numbers. Uh, but also, how, how we say words. Honestly, if you went through my Google search, you'd see that half of the time it's, how do you pronounce? Duh, duh, duh. What did I look at the other day? How do you pronounce? Obviously, I pronounce things a bit strange anyway because I'm from Yorkshire. But some of the stuff I'm <laughs> Googling, like, okay, that's how you pronounce it. But you almost have to sometimes pronounce it with a proper voice. So, like yesterday with Miller, Millie or Miller. Miller is all right if you're from Yorkshire or that area, whereas Millie is, you know, is actually how it should be pronounced. Sorry, Yorkshire guys, but yeah. So that's, I'm also finding that quite hard as well. So, well, not hard, it's not hard. It's just, you know, remembering. Sometimes when I'm writing my notes and I'm writing a long word, I have to say it in, like you would do your phonics. So like, what was I doing? I've got, a, I, had, I did one yesterday and I said it, I, were, I spelt it as I, was, as I said it, just so I could, <laughs> obviously, get to grips with it, you know. We're all winging it, it's all right, we're all winging it. So guys, rainforest, those levels of the rainforest. So I'll just show you, oh, my voice is going a bit, <clears throat> I'm getting all excited. I'll just go and get my water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need a big water in here. It's always dead warm. So. <clears throat> oh. No pun intended, but <clears throat> I feel like I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. Bit of a clue there. So, we'll look at the worksheets. We've got, so this the older children's worksheet. What we'll be working off today. And the older with my answers. That's for your crossword. But then for the younger ones, we're going to be working on this one. And we're going to get you to draw some beautiful animals that live on the different layers of the rainforest. So, guys, as I said, there is four different layers of the rainforest. Now, simply because it's not like your typical forest here, you know, we've got trees and, you know, you look up and it's it, they're just there, maybe as big as your house really, but if you went to the rainforest, it would be super, super humongous. They would be massive, really, really big, and that's why scientists dis decided to divide the rainforest into strata, so which means the zones of the rainforest based on the living environment. So the first layer we're going to look at is the emergent layer. <clears throat> and I always say, when, when we're looking at the emergent layer, always remember the emergent. So if you think of the word, do you remember what I said before about breaking down the words? If you think of emerge, 
um, it's emerging from the rainforest. This is emerging from the tops. So it's emergent. And the emergent layer, um, they're literally the giant trees that are much higher than the average canopy height. Um, and they literally, they're emerging from, from the, the, the tops of the rainforest. It houses many birds and many insects. Obviously, birds that can fly, that will be able to reach the top of the emergent layer, which being birds, those insects that are up there, that are up there, they're not safe, okay? So every habitat, every habitat, will have a number of different different things that will enable an animal to live there. Okay, so the emergent layer, it's got insects there, it's gonna attract birds that eat the insect. Okay, so, sorry guys, two seconds. I'm gonna already feel myself getting a little bit hot. It's nice and warm in here. 34 degrees to be exact so that is that is our highest level in the rainforest so that's your first first level which is the highest which is the emergent layer and for you guys it's that top one where your little butterfly is that's the top one so you can see it's a, a lot higher than the your average canopy trees but they are obviously popping out of the top they're emerging from the top of the rainforest and like I said lots of insects which then attract the birds can't keep anyone secret Prince Charming what are you doing so then we go in below the emergent layer which is the canopy, the canopy layer. This is a, quite an exciting layer of the rainforest. Um, that's the upper parts of the tree. Uh, very, very leafy, very leafy indeed. Um, full of life, including insect, birds, rap reptiles, mammals. It's, and that's why scientists decided to put these levels into their own groups. Okay, so the strat that's there, um, literally the zones of the rainforest because there's such a diverse habitat environment in those areas that they gave them their own names okay so lots when we start looking at the canopy level literally that is a jungle in itself the different habitats that are there but also again looking at how animals survive there now we need we need life in general everything that lives needs certain things to survive now if we think about your vegetable patch if in your vegetable patch you've got you've got food because you've got your vegetables you've got water because you water your vegetables you've got air to breathe you've got sunshine four things four really important things that you need for a vegetable patch they are needed on every habitat in the world okay so if you think about the, the snails maybe that go to your vegetable patch or your ladybirds, you, in that habitat, there is those four things for them, okay? They've got food, they've got water, they've got sun, sun the sun, <laughs> and they've got air to breathe, okay? So four really important things for any habitat. So looking at the canopy habitat, literally, that will be a total different kind of kettle of fish in the canopy you will find animals that are carnivores that eat other animals from the canopy you'll also find herbivores that live there so animals that eat the plants that are in the canopy level maybe they they are there because there are certain plants that are growing there that don't grow on any other level in the rainforest very 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 you know different reasons why each animal will be there but they'll be there for a reason okay but also for the animals that do live there they will have adapted now i need a uh <laughs> well, i don't know what that is that's my light bulb moment adapted that's a key word we need that word that's a really really good word adapted 
any animal that lives anywhere in the world is adapted for living there, okay? Same as we looked at Colin the cockroach last week. They have adapted to live in so many different habitats, so many different places, like the different species. And that's why they are, they are really well and easily adapt. So that's why they can survive in different areas. Now, there is an animal we're going to meet today that is adapted for living in a tree. Now, very well adapted for living in a tree, so to speak. He is, that's why I've got my glove on. This is Prince Charming. Now, don't really handle him too much. I like to show him when I'm in schools in the box. Hi, dude. Simply because he's a lot more comfier in the box. <laughs> I can see this totally going, going wrong. It is very moist, very, very moist. Now, just make sure I have got a good hold of him. I should have put two gloves on, but you can see he is very, very beautiful. That's why we call him Prince Charming. I'm actually going to put him back in because I can see it going terribly wrong and end up with a frog on my head or something. But we can have a look. Now, he is so well adapted. I'm just trying to, to live in, in the trees of the rainforest. He is actually an Australian tree frog. Now then, Australia. So if I said to you, he's an Australian white tree frog, what do we know just from, just from his name? Australian white tree frog. He's from Australia. Remember, we can tell a lot from a name. He's from Australia. Is he white? Just double check. Oh, we've got a white belly. We've got a white belly. Perfect timing, Prince Charming. Thank you. Thank you. And he lives in a tree. He's a tree frog. Okay, so let's go into that a bit more, in a bit more depth. Australia. What's weather like in Australia? Hot, hot. Hot. It's the only thing that I think of when, when we talk about Australia. It's a rainforest in Australia. Do you remember yesterday when I showed you the map? Let's have a look. Where's my map? Let's have a look at my map. Let's have a look. So, Australia. Oh, look. I'm just here to confirm we do have a rainforest in Australia. It's on the coast of Australia. But, boys and girls, being an Australian tree frog, he has his own adaptations. He has adapted to living in the Australian rainforest. Because one thing he can do is he can actually store water. Now, when I say store water, it's a bit like a camel in their hump. That's where they store their water. Now, with Prince Charming, he can get quite dumpy. They're actually known as a dumpy frog because they do get quite dumpy. Um, he's quite streamlined. He doesn't have the chance to get too dumpy. But what they do is when they get extra dumpy, they get extra dumpy because they end up with, with kind of ripples, kind of um, folds, sorry, of skin. Now, those folds of skin will help him survive in the Australian rainforest because actually those folds of skin will hold water they will hold water to enable him to obviously keep moist so he's an amphibian he can go on land and in water now with his very specialized skin being an amphibian he can he can survive he can survive quite dry temperatures because he can hold that water in his skin now also that's why I was holding him with my glove. Because it's not that he would, he's not a poisonous dart frog. He's, you know, he's not um, harmful to us. But actually, it's us who are more harmful to him. I love it when we go into schools because one of the things that sometimes, if, if I've seen any of the children at parts and things, one of the things that they will say is, we're harmful to them, aren't we? You know, they're not poisonous to us, but we're harmful to them. And I love it that they remember that. Um, but yeah, so the moisture, what we create naturally, 
is actually harmful to them. So if not too much, kind of my hands, generally, um, as long as I wet my hands, and tr you know, if I'm transferring from one box to another, but being responsible, you know, it's better to wear a glove. But also remembering, guys, if you have frogs or toads in your, in your garden, um, if you're handling them, moving them, if you're, if you're doing gardening, you, you, you see a frog or a toad, it's always good to wear a glove, um, like I said, to protect them as well as, as well as yourself. Now, talking about poison dart frogs, what was I going to... There is a question, actually, on our word search about poison dart frogs in the rainforest. Now, same as a poison dart frog, what Prince Charming would do is, up on the canopy levels where he would live, never have to come down to the ground. He was born up there. Now, what happened is the frogs that live there, remember they've got those four things that they need to survive. He's got insects, insects evidently live up there. He's got water. It rains a lot in the rainforest, around about two, two figures. Just look at my notes. Two, 18 inches, two meter. I thought it was two meter. Two meters of rain each year. That is a lot of rain. That is a lot of rain. And generally it will come in the afternoon. And obviously with that rain, but also up in these trees, you get a lot of different plants and there is actually a plant called a buttress root and it's actually a plant that just just hangs on the on the branches of the tree and what actually happens is they're kind of quite round and literally that will actually make a nice hot tub for the certain different amphibians and animals that live up there and some animals will use it for drinking amphibians use it for Obviously, having a drink, they'll jump into the water. But also, let's think about an amphibian, how they start their life. Amphibians start their life always in the water. Their eggs, frog spawn, can't survive out of water. So they've got to have access to water. But because it's the rainforest and because it rains, they can have that collection of water there to literally lay their eggs. But then if we look at the other species, so... Uh, poison dart frog what they will do is they'll actually lay their eggs on the leaf and they'll actually drop down the rain for literally drop down the rainforest into water obviously if they're dropping down generally it will mean the leaf's wet so how amazing how amazing that generally the same kind of similar animal amphibian is does lots of different things because our frogs obviously they live in ponds and they lay their frogs when they don't seem to have too much trouble it's quite simple but then you've got frogs that live up a tree how, how did they get up there to start with this is what i want to do i like i like to know the details so yes prince charming now as we start looking at the different the next layer down the understory that's a lot darker it's a very cool environment but being Prince Charming, he would actually never have to come down. He would never have to come down to the other levels of the rainforest. Now, being an amphibian, he can... I'm just thinking yesterday. Yeah, sorry. Totally lost my track of thought then. He would survive in the tree, in the on the canopy of the rainforest, simply because he's got those four things that can survive up there never having to come down now light bulb moment you ready for this one so how does a frog eat if he's eating all those insects how does he eat show me your tongue show me your tongue stick your tongue out stick your tongue out and show me your tongue right so we know generally frogs will eat their food they'll catch their food really really silent they can camouflage and when they're camouflaging they see something going past what they like uh. they'll use the tongue they'll stick the tongue out catch the fly insect something that'll go in the mouth mm. now light bulb moment adaptation i've just seen a spider crawling across 
my books. Adaptation. They have adapted an amazing, and I mean this, amazing way of eating. I can hear people shouting now, shouting. I don't mean outside, I mean on the, on the screen. Who knows how a frog actually eats their food? Now, I'm not going to answer this straight away. I'm going to let you give you a chance to get your answer down. Can't see your answers, guys. I'm really, really sorry. I can't see you saying hello. But as of yesterday, obviously, I will go down and say hello to you after the video. And if you get this answer right, before I tell you the answer, I am going to be so impressed. So, how do frogs eat their food? We said, I'll give you the clue. They put it in the mouth with the tongue how does the rest happen how does how does he get it into his into his tummy how does he get it down from his mouth into his tummy have a think have a think so i said it's really well adapted how does a frog so while you're thinking about that let me tell you about his eyes so we saw before when we had a good look at him we saw his big round eyes he's got some beautiful eyes there prince charming don't turn into a prince if you kiss him, though. If only, yeah. But, big eyes. How do big eyes help an animal? How do big eyes help an animal? We know owls have big eyes. And owls are fantastic hunters. So, Prince Charming and his eyes. He's got those big eyes. To be able to see, not just his prey, not just his food, but also predators. Can you imagine living on the canopy of the rainforest where there's lots and lots of birds, 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 prime uh, predator for a frog, reptiles, reptiles would eat a frog, snakes, things like that, uh, mammals, oh, a bit hungry, I'll just have this frog for my tea. Now, Poison start frog, going back to poison start frog. The poison start frog is poisonous, okay? So if you were to try and eat it, it would give off, you would get poison from, from the toxins that it releases in its skin. But Prince Charming hasn't got that, okay? So he's very well adapted and we can see he's got a lovely colour, very, very good for camouflage. He's actually turned quite dark now, so his shade of green will change. It goes from quite dark to literally, as you saw him before, really green, which is green as the lid on the box. So, eyes ready. This is really gross. This is really gross, guys. Are you ready for this? Right. So you've caught your fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then how does he get it into his tummy? Right. What they do... It's the user eyes. Obviously, why wouldn't they? Use their eyes. Tell ya. I'll take my glove off. So, ooh, very sweaty glove. So, eyes, mouth, caught your fly. Oh, got a mouth full of fly. So what you have to do is, he hasn't actually got a throat to, to to enable him to swallow he hasn't got that that motion that we do he hasn't got that okay so what he does is fills his mouth with his fly uses some very special adapted muscles above his eyes to then push his eyes down into his mouth which is filling his mouth even more so with the motion of the eyes going down because remember, he's still got skin between his mouth and his eyes. It's not like he can see his, his fly in his mouth and have a conversation with it. But if he pushes those eyes down, and then, as long as he doesn't open his mouth, he open his, opens his mouth, his fly will pop out. But because the fly's got nowhere else to go because his mouth's clamped shut, the only place he's got to go is, is the only space that's available, which is down his into his tummy, into his and I've just said he ain't got a throat, but he ain't got the motion of the throat. He's still got the, the process of having to go down into his digestive system. Okay? So that fly will then be pushed down by the motion of the eyes going down, down into 
to the mouth to fill the mouth and then the only place the the insect can go is down his throat into his digestive system into his tummy isn't that amazing isn't it amazing that a frog can literally eat with his eyes now if i were dead good at technology i would kind of put a a little thing somewhere and I'd, I'd send you to youtube there's actually videos on youtube of an x-ray of a frog and you can actually see the process of how it happens the eyes going down into the mouth and then obviously the insect going down into his digestive system so isn't that amazing that he uses his eyes how bizarre is that but guys you will hear me say this time and time again nature really is the wonder of the world there's always questions to be asked you can never i would never believe anyone if they said there was an expert in in nature because there is always always questions to be asked and don't be scared of asking those questions either guys um i am a great believer in asking questions asking questions and knowing knowing the answer knowing the process knowing what you want to know and not being satisfied until you know your satisfied to the answer let me see him he's so beautiful can you see the motion the movement is making that's him breathing so he's he's actually because he's got permeable skin his skin's really thin he can soak up more oxygen by moving that skin so he's soaking up that oxygen through his skin by move literally by moving it give it a go it's funny isn't it i bet you all look right funny now i do wish i could see you sometimes i do so canopy so let's have a look where the canopy is so where prince charming would live would be on these lower trees so that's the most diverse where life is on the lower the canopy let's have a look where we are on here so this one that's your canopy so moving down we've got the understory as we said it's a dark cool environment under leaves but definitely still we're nowhere near the ground we're just moving down those layers animals that live there in general would be animals that need quite a lot of moisture same as prince charming but the animals that live there will be adapted to living there a lot better than prince charming who although does like moisture he likes the insects that are be freely available on the canopy remember need those four things there and for prince charming they are on the canopy a lot more a lot more access to what he needs on the canopy so when we look at the understory still get animals there get animals really on the understory that sometimes are passing through but the, the you know there's still habitats under there you would find lots of different insects that cockroaches, 110% cockroaches up there. They will feed on lots of different things up there. Um, mosquitoes, lots of different flying, flying things that are able to adapt themselves to living there. Animals that are passing through, monkeys, monkeys, bears, bears. We have arboreal bear, arboreal means uh, tree dwelling, uh, they live in you know above ground so i got a question asked yesterday do bears live in the rainforest we do we have a speckled bear that live in the rainforest and they will they will live up the trees so again you will always get the, that passing traffic through the different layers of the rainforest now the forest floor No, nope, sorry, I've missed one. I thought I had. Understory, which is here. So the understory is ground plants, but what have grown up and they, the tops of them. And on the understory, 
those plants that are there, literally, those plants that are there, generally, will be ones fighting for that sunlight. So if you think of the massive canopy of the rainforest, it shadows pretty much everything on everything below. And what those plants are doing, they're always finding that light. Do you remember those four things? Even plants need those four things, okay? So they're always fighting for space to, to get some sunlight. Now, one really interesting thing is, obviously, in the rainforest with all the trees, whenever a tree falls down from, you know, if it's got a disease or if, if it's been cut down, you will always find it's the the space that it's left those plants from the understory will literally race and the quickest growing will win that race because obviously they've got there first and they will fill those spaces so there's not it's not very often that there's these spaces left in the rainforest for that sunshine to come through so animals generally that live below the canopy are animals that can eat, are either can get to the to the, the higher levels to get that sunshine or they literally have to find the tiny little kind of rays that come in and you'll find a lot of them in the on the rainforest floor sorry guys really dry today so forest floor now the forest floor is an amazing place honestly if i could go to the rainforest I'd live in a swinging tent from the trees and I'd love it. I really would love it, although the heat doesn't always agree with me, but I would love it. I'd love to, to see like the different animals that live there. It'd be amazing. And I think the best layer for me would be the forest floor because it just, I could just imagine the life there. Can you imagine the noises? Sometimes I have crickets chirping in the back here, but the noises, honestly, sometimes when I do a meditation in the morning, literally for 10 minutes, I sit here and just listen, when the internet's working right, listen to, to, to noises that would be in the rainforest. So on that note, just for a second, let's just think about what noises you'd hear coming from the rainforest. So, definitely crickets, frogs, frogs chirp, some chirp, some bark, lots of different noises, birds, lots of birds, howl monkeys. You'd hear so much just to be able to sit there and pick out, just write a note of what you're listening to or what you can hear. I mean, half of them probably wouldn't know what they are, but just to be able to experience that, the noises, they'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It really would. So, guys. On your worksheets, the younger worksheets, let's start drawing. Let's start drawing. So we spoke about the different la different layers. So you know all your layers now. Emergent canopy, understory, and the forest floor. We'll go a bit deeper onto the forest floor in a second. But let's have some drawings. Draw some some animals that might be on the different layers of your rainforest. And you are more than welcome, please do send me any pictures actually a big shout out to the boys and girls who finished all their worksheets last week and sent me pictures of your colored worksheets i am doing a slideshow to send to nursing homes we would normally visit and they're doing the same they're going to send us a slideshow so all the coloring papers all the coloring pages you've got in your packages um i would love it if you sent me pictures of them completed like I said, we could put together a slideshow of of you boys and girls and share it with the nursing homes. I think that's a love, such a lovely idea to to share um, our work with people who, who really are on total lockdown, who can't have family visiting them and stuff. It's really, really upsets me. So, forest floor, teeming with animal life, especially insects. The largest animals in the rainforest generally live there. And actually one of the largest animals you'll find in a rainforest is the African African forest elephant. I just wanted to make sure I said that right. I nearly said, yeah, don't matter what nearly said. African forest elephant. So that's that's the biggest animal that would live in the rainforest. The smallest, the smallest bird that lives in the rainforest 
would be a short-tailed pygmy. Everyone always wants to be like me, pygmy. Um, short-tailed pygmy. Where is my word search? I told you I'm not good with words. Lost it. Ah, see it. Short-tailed pygmy tyrant. Have a, look, have a look at that. Have a look up at that short tailed pygmy tyrant. First person to send me a picture of what it is. Give you a, a little surprise. Give you a little little reward. So guys, yeah, I am more than happy. Get involved. Um send me send me pictures. I'll do a shout out. Um like I said, I'm definitely gonna get on Google today when I get chance and, and have a look at why comment and isn't working so should have done it yesterday but i have a lot of animals to clean out i've got two sons see that gritted teeth gritted teeth two sons to to school well when i say school 16 year old he thinks he's left school and you know that's it now but he just wants to go out on his school all time he's finding it hard <laughs> then my 11 year old He's been super good. Although I keep telling him when I'm coming on live, turn the internet off, turn your computers off, turn your laptops off. So he has to stop doing his schoolwork, bless him. Um, and then obviously starts it again when I finish my videos. So they are being good. It could be, could be worse. We've put up our TP tent in our garden. Luckily we've got a really big garden. Um, we've put our big TP tent up and they've got, they've got bits in there. And I think they're on holiday sometimes. But to be honest, it was it was me being selfish. Having two boys who argue all the time can sometimes be an headache. So boys and girls, if you've got brothers and sisters, I'm sure you know what I mean. And sometimes it's just nice to for them to be in there and me to be sometimes in the house. I don't always I'm not always in the house, majority of the time I'm in here. But just so we have different places we can go. It's very blessed. So Keep digressing, don't I? Teeming with animal life, forest floor, cockroaches, snails, big snails. Remember, these animals generally are a lot bigger than we would find in the UK. So giant snails, giant millipedes, cockroaches, spiders, tarantulas, scorpions. Honestly, the amount there is absolutely out of this world. And when I say out of this world, the just a rainforest such an amazing place now just some figures for you obviously i've got them on note not good at remembering my numbers rainforests have been around for tens of millions of years okay in the tambopa bop yeah reserve in peru they found on a single tree 43 43 different ant species 43 different species not ants but 43 different species just on one tree so that's ranging through all of those different layers of the rainforest literally emergent understory canopy forest floor all through those those different layers 43 different species of ant how amazing is that in panama um Beetle species were found, um, 18,000 species of beetle were found over 2.5 acres, 2.5 acres, it's not very big, but 18,000, guys, this is just totally out of the water, statistics, um, and remembering on the forest floor, the indigenous people that lived there as well. In the Amazon rainforest, there's 940,000 people that live in the Amazon rainforest. So the numbers are quite spectacular. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So how many football field sized pictures of land are destroyed each day in the Amazon basin alone? So just in the Amazon rainforest alone, how many football sized pictures? 
it's just this is the like shocking statistics that really like, kind of hit home so 10,000 that's 10,000 football sized pieces of land that are destroyed every day every single day in the Amazon base, uh, rainforest it's just really just put some things into perspective palm oil if any of you did or have done your shopping list your treasure hunt shopping list treasure hunt what is in your worksheet packs palm oil should have been a big one that you'll find in lots of different products lots and lots and this is one thing you can do to help sustain those rainforests to help save those rainforests to help save the lungs of the world yeah is have a look at your products that you're buying cut down and buying plastics i know a lot of people are saying this now guys but honestly cut down and buying plastics cut down and buying certain products that have palm oil in some companies now big companies um, are actually changing to sustainable palm oil that's still got to come from somewhere okay so it's it's about being mindful it's about knowing what you produce what 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 you're literally eating and where it's coming from okay so palm oil is killing orangutans okay now orangutans are an ape they live in borneo and sumatra rainforest and if anyone has seen there is shocking shocking video footages really really upsetting to see um so i wouldn't suggest you boys and girls look at it but it just puts into perspective really what is going on what we don't realize from the result of what we what we buy what we buy where our money is going to these big massive companies who are only bothered about money so what is the world's largest rainforest the good old amazon good old amazon let's have a look where it is on our map so we can see the Amazon rainforest is the biggest one, okay? And that's why majority of my animals are Amazon or African, African millipede, um, African snail, forgot what I had then, African pygmy hedgehog. And remembering guys, um, majority of my animals are rescues. They don't, although they a native or originate in Africa most of the animals that I have come to me either as rescues or my insects the snails are rescue a lot of my insects will come to me that um, from uh, pet shops that generally are too old to, to sell on okay maybe old breeding pairs um, that's what that's where I get my I don't want to say stock that's an awful thing to say stock they're not stock they're my family um, and I think it's really important you know that um, but also you know they are very very precious to me and it's awful when they do come to me because they don't they don't live very long but I know that I'm doing good I'm obviously telling you boys and girls educating you about all these different animals and how we can help these animals in the wild um is is a big thing and that's 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 really a really really important thing is to be mindful of what we, we are buying what we are eating um not just where our money's going but what we're putting in our bodies where it's coming from what impact we're having on the world i think it's so important i do especially at the minute with what's going on the air quality air quality is, is oh, nice big deep breath fresh air probably the freshest it's been in a long long time so yeah that's my message today be mindful of what you're consuming be mindful of where you're where you're making an impact okay so guys i do hope everybody's enjoyed it's a long one today I do hope see this is it once i get on one once i start talking you can't shut me up so guys thank you so much for being here um we'll see ya tomorrow 10 o'clock for our carrying on with our lives tomorrow we're gonna do an overview of the 
of our worksheets and see what we've done and what we haven't done. If you need any help with anything, do let me know. Um, but look at the mammals, how mammals have adapted to living in the rainforest. Um, so yeah, exciting one tomorrow again. So guys, thank you so much for being here. I don't think I have anything else to tell you. Mm. Yeah, thanks for being here. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the sunshine. And we'll see you tomorrow. TTFN, guys.